الله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ومولانا أبو القاسم محمد الله وعلى آله طيبين طاهرين المعصومين عما بعد فقد قال الله الحكيم في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله لا يغير ما بقوم حتى يغير ما بأنفسهم صلوة First and foremost, I would like to send out my congratulations as we gather on this auspicious occasion to Imam Zaman Abdullah Taala Farja Husheed. As we commemorate the birth of his father. Our 11th Imam, Imam Abu Muhammad Al Hassan Al Askari, Lehi Salatu Al Salam. And I send my congratulations out to you all as well. Obviously, what can be said about Imam Hassan Al Askari, Lehi Salatu Al Salam? We can say that his grandfather is Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. And we could also say that his father, Imam Ali, alayhi salatu And we could also say that his mother, his Fatima, the Zahra, salamu alayhi alayha. And we can't neglect the rest of the Ayamma who preceded him as his fathers as well. And who can even add to the fact that it is his son who was our Imam, Imam Mahdi. Ajalallahu ta'ala farijah hu sharif. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Imam. Imam Hassan al-Askari alayhi salatu wa salam, as mentioned, was our 11th Imam. And this Imam lived a very short life. He died, he was martyred at the age of 28. And we are commemorating his birth tonight. The Imam during his time was the beacon of light for us, for the believers. He was the best of creation during his time, the most knowledgeable, the most pious, and the most righteous. And any attribute that you could give any creation, he was the uppermost of that attribute. This is our 11th Imam, the father of our Imam. And what he did during his time was no different than any of the other a'imma alayhi muslim during their time. They were individuals who taught us how to make changes in our lives. How to stop thinking like an animal and become a human. How to change from one state into the next state. Islam in general was designed to do what? To make changes in us. Changes for the better. And this is the topic of this talk tonight. Change. Tabgir or tabdil, change. Salawat, if you're familiar with this word, change. <laughs> First of all, before we even move forward, let's define the word change. Change, one meaning of change is to replace something with something else. Another meaning of change is to alter, to make it different. And obviously, change is also to replace something altogether. These are some of the definitions of change. Now obviously, uh, revolution is also a type of change, but a revolution is a fast, abrupt change, as opposed to some changes can take a little bit of time, some a moderate amount of time, and a revolution is just a, a fast change. Nonetheless, Islam was sent for each and every one of us to go through a spiritual revolution, to make spiritual changes, to go from one state in which we only think about our lower base desires, to transform ourselves or to change ourselves and to become better than the angels. Change. Now obviously, when we think about changes, because when we think about changes, we must first realize that change is a constant phenomenon. The fact that you may have heard 
Or I know I've heard when I was younger is that, you know, you will never change or things will always remain the same. This is furthest from the truth. Change is constant. When we were born, we were born in a state of weakness from the womb and we gradually change into a state of strength and then we continue back into a what? State of weakness. Change is constant. Likewise, that applies to knowledge. We were born ignorant and we change and, and, and we increase the knowledge and obviously when we get older, we start losing our memory, this and that, and we change continuously. Obviously, when we die, we go through another set of changes. So understand that change is a constant thing. It does not stop. For example, we are one, a few moments older than we were a moment ago. In fact, we may be a bit smarter than we were a moment ago. Change is constant. Salawat, if you understand completely. In our most recent times, obviously, we have witnessed a lot of changes. We have seen, let's just talk about some changes outside of the foes of Islam to establish the premise of this, this talk, which is change. I'm trying to paint a picture, and the first color I'm going to use is discussing change outside of Islam. There was a time in this country in which Hamer, alcohol, was what? Forbidden. It was illegal. Not only according to their scriptures, but according to the, the law of the land, alcohol, Hamer, was illegal. And what gradually happened, which was not for the better, mind you, they changed to where now Hamer, which is illegal according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they went and made it legal. So this is an example of negative change. Salawat if you're with me thus far. There was a time in this country, I'm from here, there was a time in this country that when the women left their house, they used to have these bonnets, talk about non-Muslim women, they used to have these little bonnets on their head, okay, and they had dresses that the top came up under their chin, and they would drag on the ground. Now look how we change to where nowadays, we see what we see out in the streets where there's very little uh, fabric on the female. Think about it. This is also a negative change in society. Salawat if you're with me thus far. I need you to be with me. <laughs> there used to be a time where... Uh, I'm trying to keep it G. There used to be a time where... Uh, it was forbidden for a man to marry a man and a woman to marry a woman. According to the scripture here and according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was forbidden. But they changed negatively, mind you. I'm painting a picture. I need you to be with me. This is very, very important. This lecture is not just some lecture that's just out there to uh, pass the time. This is very important and you need to understand right now. The change was negative to where we see what we see now to where we are morally degraded, de degraded in this society. Now everyone has seen, and there are many more of these changes. Mind you, things did change, correct? Salawat, if things did change, but they changed for the worse. Salawat, if this is true. <laughs> okay, now, let's now take a step forward. Take a step forward. There used to be a time where the masjids of Allah were packed regularly, every day of the week, every month of the year. Things changed for the negative to where now the house of Allah is only packed a couple days of the year, maybe one or two months of the year. Salawat, if this is correct, a negative change that we've seen. There used to be a time where Islam was the foundation. Everything in a family, the individual, their foundation was Islam. Everything they did revolved around their Islam. If it benefited and helped their Islam, they continued. If it was threatening their Islam, they abandoned it. There was a time it was like that. And also it went all into the family, where the household... Uh, you saw the culture of Islam being manifested. Everything else revolved around that. 
And then we gradually changed from a state in which Islam was the top priority to a time in where Islam is no longer the top priority. It's instead of molding ourselves to Islam, we're trying to mold Islam to ourselves. Is this not a true negative change that we witnessed in the past year? Salawat, if this is correct. Don't die down on me now, brothers and sisters. Let the salawat be nice and that every time. In nah. Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yeah, ayu alladhina amanu attaqu Allah wa kulu kalan sadidan. Oh, you who believe, fear Allah and speak straight words. Life, Islam is not about making you feel good. Islam is about being good. And let's be even more specific, especially to my young brothers and sisters. Ashlul Bayt does not want fans. Ashlul Bayt wants followers. There's a distinction. We have gone, we have changed, I'm not talking about specifically, in general, we have changed from being shield, from being followers of Ahlul Bayt, meaning imitators of Ahlul Bayt, to being fans of Ahlul Bayt. Oh, I like them. Instead of, I am trying to be like them. I like them, as opposed to, I'm trying to be like them. Now, for my young brothers and sisters, do you understand the difference? There's a difference between saying, I like Ahlul Bayt, and I'm trying to be like Ahlul Bayt. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Imam Hassan al-Askari, sent his forefathers and our Imam to be examples for us. And when someone is an example, they are meant to be followed. What's another word for followed? Imitated. Bismillah, louder. Imitated. Imitated. We don't cheer them, ah, oh, mashallah, we like them. No, they're to be imitated. We, everyone knows the word tech lead. That's been debated, argued at the kitchen table, this and that, forget that. Who do we do tech lead to first and foremost? Who do we imitate his conduct, his manners to the best of our ability first and foremost? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi in his stead, Imam Ali. In his stead, Imam Hassan, so on and so forth, all the way down to the birth of Imam Hassan al Askari, who was our guide, our leader, our example of his time, and even our Imam now. So, what if this is true? So, obviously, I think you understand where I'm going. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about change in Quran. I began to talk with it. Allah does not change the condition of a people until they change what is within themselves. Now we're going to start adding more colors to this portrait if you send a Allah. <laughs> When we talk about the ills of society, we, truth be told, many dinner tables, many walks, many modulus after the modulus, we talk about the horrible things that are going on in this world. The tragedies, the, we know that uh, oppression is very common these days. Vroom is very common these days. Unfortunately, this is a negative change as well. We also know that Islam has been connected, disconnected from the people. Islam is perfect. But for whatever reason, it has been disconnected from the people. If you think about Islam as an as a energy source, the people have to plug into it. For whatever reason, we've become unplugged, and we need to go from that state and change and become, once again, plugged into Islam, plugged into Ahlul Bayt. Salawat if you understand, especially my young brothers and sisters. Allahumma salli ala Many of my young brothers and sisters don't know that the masjid used to, be have, used to have five daily prayers daily. Many of them think what they see is the norm. Think about it. They don't know. Many of us, many of our youngsters don't know that the masjid was, was used every single day. There was modulus at the masjid. You know, the five daily prayers at the masjid. Any disputes was handled at the masjid. Uh, there's many narrations of the imams having, uh, uh, being, having discussions uh, at the masjid. Think about it. But we've made a change that was not so good. But the beauty of this all is that all we have to do is change back before it's too late. Change back. 
when we look, we know that in our time right now, we I mean, if you turn on the news right now, the names have changed of the martyrs, but the horrific acts are just repeating themselves, unfortunately. When you look at the oppression of the Shia nowadays, it's unfortunate. When you look at the, the masjids are far away from the people. Unfortunately, truth be told, religion has turned into religiotainment. <coughs> religion, getting closer to Allah, has been turned into religiotainment, where we just have guys that come in and make us feel good, mashallah, and they leave, as opposed to coming in and trying to fix things in the community. And this is very important. We have to change because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and the tafsir concerning this verse of Quran, Allah means Allah does not change the good condition of a people into bad condition until they change the good condition of their spiritual selves into a bad condition. That means, for my young brothers and sisters, if you are obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, following Quran, what, he, what does following the Quran mean? Whatever Allah said to do that is halal, you do it. Whatever Allah says is haram, you stay away from, you stay away from. If you are doing that, fulfilling the wajibat, fulfilling what is wajib, for example, five daily prayers if you're balik, uh, fasting the holy month of Ramadan, uh, if you're doing these things, Allah says that he will bestow blessings upon you without cease as long as you're in this state. But when you transform and become rebellious, where the holy month of Ramadan is like uh, an option. Maybe I'll fast, maybe I won't. Or with five daily prayers, well, you know, I offer three out of five. That's pretty good. When we begin doing these things, Allah will withdraw those blessings and turn the blessings into punishments. This is what that ayat means. And obviously the opposite holds true. If we are in a state of disbelief, if we're in a state of rebellion, if we're in a state of, of hypocrisy or kufr, and we change back, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will once again bestow his blessings. And here's the thing. This is my argument. I've had so many conversations with famous Malana that you all know, you know, big scholars. I'm talking about kum for years and this and that, high grades. And we have these discussions at the table that may not get to the membar. And that's why I'm wondering, why not? Why are these discussions not being where they need to be from the membar? That we need to change back. We need to separate culture from the teachings of Ahlul Bay. Just think about this. And I want my young brothers and sisters to understand this. I love chai. I love, I love the tea. I love it nice and strong. I love it, ah! Keep you up for like three days after you drink one cup of it. Okay, now, I'm pretty sure that others like that tea too. Because we have people who compete making that tea who can make it the best, right? Here's the thing. Who wants their tea watered down? Even if you don't like tea and you like some type of Kool-Aid or something, do you want it mixed perfectly? Just enough sugar? Just enough Kool-Aid? Or do you want it watered down? Answer me. Do you want it strong or do you want it watered down? If you're sick, ladies and gentlemen, and you go to the doctor and he provides you a prescription, do you want the generic medicine that you're going to have to take it for two years to get better, or do you want the good stuff? The good stuff. Do you want the pure teachings of Ahlul Bay, or do you want some watered down stuff? So what do we do? We have to make a change. Think about it. Is the Quran our leader, or are we trying to lead the Quran? Are the Ahlul Bayt our leaders or are we trying to lead Ahlul Bayt? We have to make a change. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says another verse in the Quran, which many of you have memorized, that also implies a change. Remember, I started with, Inna Allaha la yugayiru ma bi kawmin hatta yugayiru ma bi anfusihim. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says this, Alam yani lillalladhina amanu <laughs> is not the time come for those who believe that they humble their hearts to what was uh, to the remembrance of Allah and what was sent down of the truth? If Allah, Allah's not talking about uh, the people. He's not talking about the non-Muslims. He says, is it not time for who? Those who profess belief. 
So if he has to say, is it now the time to humble your hearts? Obviously, the hearts are not humbled. My young brothers are sharp over here, I tell you. And I know the sisters are too. They're keeping their voices down. MashaAllah. So we have to do what? Make a change. Get back. When we talk about what's going on in Pakistan today, or India today, or Bahrain, or, or, or Syria, or any of these places, everyone has their opinions on what needs to be done. True? All right. You go to somebody's house, well, they need to do this, that, and the third. Go to the next person's house, they need to do this, that, and the third. Go to someone else's house, a whole new other set of options. They need to know. They need to really do this. But there is one thing that is the answer, and it's not my opinion, because my opinion and everybody else's opinion are worthless. Right? Ahmad Bayt give us an opinion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us an opinion. If you ask me, say, Sheikh Yusuf or Brother Yusuf, uh, 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 what kind of mountain bike do you prefer? Then I'll give you my opinion. You ask me a matter of Islam, my opinion is given to me. You understand the difference? Anything concerning how to be a human being, how to live our lives, how to carry ourselves, how to have good akhlaq and these type of things, no scholar has an opinion. The opinion is given to them by Ahlul Bayt. But if you want to know, uh, you know uh, what color you like or this or that, then you can have any opinion that you want. So what do we need to do to fix all of the ills in society today? Although it may take some time and it may never change because obviously uh, the imam is going to come when there's uh, more oppression than there is now. So it's going to get worse. But we still have to do our part. So what if this is true? So what is the correct advice that should be given at the next dinner table, at the next modulus, at the next park, or any gathering where two Muslims are talking about what's going on today? What is the correct answer that should be given? That should be given. We need to change from what to what? From bad to good. Yes, and in simpler terms, we need to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to once again adopt the teachings of Ahlul Bayt. We need to make a change. Because if we change, just think. This is one of the side conversations, speaking with different Malanas, that uh, uh, I said, you know, I'll give you an insight. I said, it's amazing how some of my brothers and sisters who come here quickly abandon their religion. You're going to come here and not willingly, they become seduced and tricked by shaitan, by this dunya. This dunya is addictive. And you have to be very strong to uh, combat it and repel it. And what was replied on many occasions is, that is true, but even in some of the home country, we're not doing things properly either. And if we're not doing things According to Ahl Bayt, we have replaced the teachings of Ahl Bayt with some type of culture. Allah is not pleased. Let me ask you this for my young brothers and sisters. I paint. That's what I do. I like to paint, do light carpentry work, but painting is my thing. Painting. You hire me to paint your home. You're going for ziyada and you want me to paint the exterior of your home, all right? Bear with me. This is an analogy for my young brothers and sisters. You hire me to paint your home and you say, uh, Brother Yusuf, I want you to paint the house. White with green trimming, with the green eaves. It would be nice. White house, nice white house with green eaves. You know, beautiful house. Now, when you go to Ziyara, you say, listen, I'm going to go. We agreed upon a payment, which is Islamic. Before even though we agreed upon the payment, I agreed to paint the house to your specifications. We agree on that. You go to Ziyara. You text some of your neighbors. They're like, mashallah, your house looks great. It is beautiful. Oh, this guy, Yusuf, he paints so well. So you're excited. You come home, you, know, you had a wonderful ziyara, you pray for all your family members, you pray for increasing uh, tawfiq and blessings of Allah, you pray for increasing fearing Allah and this and that. You come back, you pull up, and you see that your house is beige with burgundy trim. And I'm like, <coughs> where's my compensation? Do I deserve payment? Why? Because I did not do what I was supposed to do. So you understand that. If you hire someone to do a job and they do not do 
what you agreed upon, are they deserving of reward? No. Okay. That is clear for everyone? Salawat if it is. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set down Quran al kareem as the book, He set down the Ahlul Bayt as the teachers and demonstrators of this book, and we decide to do something other than what they ordained, are we deserving of reward or not? Now just think about that for a moment. Think about it. Shaitan was cast out because he said, Allah, if you exempt me from showing respect to Adam, alayhi salam, I will worship you better than any of your creation. And what did Allah say in paraphrasing? You do not worship me like you want to. You worship me like I told you to. Think about it. You know, this thing, in general, I've learned this. I've seen this, rather. I've witnessed it in many different places. When it comes to an imam, we have the date of shahadat memorized. Salawat if this is correct. In general, we have the waladat of an imam memorized also. Salawat if this is correct. We have the date our imam was born. We have the date that he dies. But we fall short when it comes to the teaching that he did in between those two points. Salawat if you understand. All of the imams taught us while they were alive. Okay, we understand that they were born, we understand that they died. But while they were alive, they were teaching us things. They were demonstrating things. Think about it to my young brothers and sisters. When you go to school, no matter what grade, you're going to get a what? Textbook. Correct? So what if this is correct? <laughs> does the teacher come in, give you the textbook, and say, I'll be back in a week to give you the test? Or does the teacher explain the textbook and demonstrate the textbook? Because if you're left alone, you're all going to have your own opinion on what? How to do the problems in the book, whether it's math, social studies, or science. You're going to be, no, oh, this is the right way to do it. No, this is the right way to do it. True or false? And you're going to be arguing. So the teacher dispels all those myths and says, listen, this is the book. I'm going to show you what is correct and what is not. Salawat if this is correct. <laughs> Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down Quran as the textbook, and he sent down Ahlul Bayt to do what? Teach and explain the textbook. Demonstrate. Teach, explain, and demonstrate. This is also something, and I'm, I'm going to pick on the scholars too. Because, you know, Ahlul Bayt give us an example. Imam Ali, alayhi salatu wasalam, right? In the Masjid of Kufa, for example, I'm using this as an example so you can understand how things have changed for the negative. Imam Ali, just say for example, he, gave, he did give lectures on this, but he gave a lecture on giving sadaqah secretly, okay? He's in Kufa, in the Masjid of Kufa, giving a modulus, telling the people on how to give sadaqah, and the best sadaqah is when it's given secretly. So he gives the lecture on that, right? That's what the Maulana does. Obviously, he's the big Maulana. The little Maulanas, they do that as well. But here's the difference between the Maulanas now and the Maulana, the real Maulanas. After he gave you the lecture and taught you how to do it, what did he do next? He demonstrated it. He was also awake at night in Kufa with bread and stuff on his shoulder doing what? Dropping it off to the needy. So as the Maulana, the real Maulana, he gave you the lecture teaching you how to do it, and he also demonstrated how to do it. And that has been lost as well, a negative change. There was one revolution I've seen in the last century where the Maulana gave you a lecture on how to do it, and he also showed you how to do it, and we know he's from Iran. Ayatollah Khomeini. Whether you like him or not, he talked about how to do it and he showed you how to do it. Why? This is the teachings of Ahlul Bayt. This is what we need now which will make communities better. The Maulana should give you the lecture on what needs to be done and also be the first to what? Lead the way. This is also a negative change. Rasulullah did that. When you think about saying, I was talking to a brother today, alhamdulillah, about disputes. You know, this is also a negative change. You know, one ethnic background group wants to do things in the masjid this way. One place wants to do it this way. 
One wants to do it that way. Is there an example in history how to compromise? Is there one? Because understand this, my young brothers and sisters. Every situation that you go to, you go through, Ahlul Bayt have gone through it similar and have given you a way to handle yourself. Who's the chief of Ahlul Bayt? Wow. <laughs> Who's the chief of Ahlul Bayt? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. When they were in Mecca and the clans were disputing about who's going to put the black stone in his place, what did Rasulullah do? He made a compromise. He said, listen, put down a blanket, put the black stone in, each group grab a, a, and pick it up and I will put it in. It was a compromise. How is that tangible right now? For example, we have, I'm just guessing, Iranians here, Iraqis here, Desi here, okay, so we have Ahmad Bayt teaching and whatever else is added on. So how can that be tangible right now? Let's say one day uh, everyone's gathered here just for a meeting and you put on the board Iranians, Pakistani, Indians, Iraqi, indigenous people, meaning from America. You put a list up there. Okay, do Ahmad on Thursday night, Friday nights. Everybody does that, put it across the board. Okay, uh, uh, certain duas after, certain taqibah after the prayers. Everybody does that. So when you put a list on the board, everything that is in every single group, what do you do? That is what you adopt at the center. Anything that anybody does individually, do that on your own time. But what stops that? Compromise. Ego. That's why this is a negative change. It used to be a time where people would give you, brothers and sisters, yes, there was a time where people would give you big sadaqa. Let me give you an example from Imam Sadiq, alayhi salatu wasalam. If you send a loud sadaqa. Allah. Allah. I'm paraphrasing. There was a family among the families that Imam Sadiq would take care of. He would give them money annually. He didn't just give them five or ten dollars. He would give them money to last them the whole year. Okay? But he would do it secretly. He would have his slave or his servant go and give them this money with a, a false name. This is from such and such, Abdullah. Something true, but not knowing he's Imam Saleh, right? So every time the slave would go and deliver, one time the recipient said, this, you know, Abdullah is always so generous. But that Imam Saleh down the block, he is so stingy. It was Imam Saleh who was giving the, the sadhaka secretly. But now when we give sadhaka, I'm going to give sadhaka, but I want my name on the school, on the madrasa. I'm going to give you the sadhaka, but I want a big parking spot in the front. You see how we've changed from the teachings of who? I can give you a laundry list that any maulana you have in here that's loyal to Ahlul Bayt will concur that we have changed from the example and teaching of Ahlul Bayt. All we have to do is simple. Go back. Change back. Just think. Obviously, I wasn't born Muslim, right? Unfortunately. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Islam gave me the means to do what? Make a change. Right? So you see in front of you a weakling like me that change is possible. And not a fake false change. It's been 14 years since I recited the Shahada. Okay. But the thing is, my mother said, you will never change. So change is doable. But the thing is, uh, we have to be loyal. We have to go from being disloyal to Ahlul Bayt to being loyal to Ahlul Bayt. There are two types of Shia in general. Who is familiar with the tragedy of Karbala? This is obviously a, a rhetorical question. Who is familiar by Allah Salawat with the tragedy of Karbala? Allah. Now let me ask this, other than a few scattered troops, most of Yazid's army came from what place? And most of those that came from Kufa wrote letters uh, saying that they were the Shia of who? What did they do? When their dunya was in jeopardy, what did they do? Right, so we see two distinct type of Shia. And one of them, we want to not be that. We seek refuge with Allah from being that. And the other is our example. 
We have the Shia that they didn't have to say that they were Shia. Imam Hussein said, these are my Shia. Then you have the other group who professed to be Shia, but when their dunya was in danger, they did what? Spit the religion out like saliva. So some uh, treat religion like spit. When they're around someone, they keep it in their mouth. But when they're by themselves, they spit it out. So we need to be the Shia that are loyal to who? We, okay, you're getting quiet on me. We need to be the Shia that are loyal to who? We need the Shia that are loyal to who? We need to be the Shia that are loyal to who? Right. We have to go from our disloyalty. Many of us, we're loyal on certain times of the year, on certain nights. We're nothing but... Let me give you an example of loyalty and disloyalty. Okay? This is loyalty. There's a... You know, I'm going to give you this example of how we put religion on the back burner. Meaning we put religion as low priority. I have a job interview uh, in downtown Austin, right? Is the traffic bad in Austin? Uh, okay. I have an interview in Austin for a job, right? And that interview is like 8.30 in the morning. And you're like, wow. The guy said I got to be there at 8.30. Man, there's going to be traffic. I got to leave at least an hour ahead of time. But what do you do? Do you call and cancel or do you do what? You leave early. You leave early because that job interview is... Now, so you see the priority. Okay, I just got to leave early. I got to get to that interview. Now, there's a modulus going on. The birth of an imam or the death of an imam. Right? I know the modulus is supposed to start at a certain time, but traffic is bad. I'll just go another time. It's not really important. Well, matter of fact, it's only uh, the eighth and ninth imam. If it was Imam Sadiq, I'd get there. If it's Imam Ali, I'd get there. Imam Hussein, but the other imams that are all equal in rank except for Imam Ali and Imam Hussein, but they're, the first of them is Muhammad, the last of them is Muhammad, and the middle of them is Muhammad. All of them have high ranks. All of them should be honored, but we're like loyal to some and disloyal to others. Knowing or not knowing that they are aware of our actions. Or, you know what, you know, it's a shahada, but something came up, I'm going to do something. Else. What can come up more important than gathering in the house of Allah for the sake of Ahlubayt? But you see how our mouths say one thing, but our actions contrary. And we have to do what, my young brothers and sisters? It starts with a C, we have to change. We have to become Islamically mature. Now, what does that mean? When we make a decision, we make a decision based on. Islam. When we choose to do something in life, it should be beneficial to Islam. We have to make Islam our culture. We have to make Islam our culture. We have to, I, I've said this before, that, uh, you know, trust me, you know, we complain all the time, there's too much culture in Islam. And I even tell to the indigenous people, okay, just like it's true we have culture coming from other areas, you got to make sure the African Americans leave that culture too. We have to make sure the Latinos leave that culture too. There is one culture that everyone has to unify on because Allah says they are the best example, and that is the culture of who? <coughs> it's not Pakistani culture. It's not Iranian culture. It's not Iraqi culture. It's not American culture. It's the culture of who? <laughs> and we have to change from these other cultures and adopt the culture of? Islam. And the teachings of? Islam. And we do that through the word, starts with a C, Change. Change. Is it doable or impossible? Doable. So let's do it. We're running out of time. We're running out of time. Just think. Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, As you are, He said, As you are, so shall you be ruled. Think of this hadith. Famous, common. As you are, so shall you be ruled. That means if you are a righteous people, the leader is going to come from among you and he's going to be? If you are a corrupt people, the leader is going to come from among you and he's going to be? Corrupt. Look what leaders we have now. Some of the leaders, not all, some of them oppose Islam 
sometimes. Some of them oppose it. Some just breach it. You know, some will abandon an aspect of Islam. Some oppose it outright. True or false? True. Many of our revolutions, it's not our, we're not revolting to establish the Sharia. Listen, we're not revolting to establish the teachings of Ahlul Bayt, the law of Allah. What we're revolting for is what? To get this guy out, to put this other guy in because I like him and he, you know, he caters to my needs. But the reality is this. Before, before we can advance, we must first confess our ills. If we're in denial, we can't improve. Think about it. In society, there's a thing called an alcoholic. Hopefully nobody is an alcoholic. But as an alcoholic, the first thing they say is that before an alcoholic, one who's addicted to drinking hamad, which is haramus maximus, super haram, that before they can become better, they have to confess, I have a problem with this. Then they can advance. Because if they think everything's fine, they're not even going to try to get, they're not even going to try to change for the better. So we have to first realize and say, wait a minute. Have I really been showing my loyalty to Imam Hussein, who sacrificed his life with Karbala? Have I been really loyal to Rasulullah? He says, I leave you two things, the Quran and Aqul Bayt, they're attached. If we've abandoned the Quran, then we've abandoned, because they're attached. So think about it. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm not here to make you cheer that my Arabic is good or I've been studying for this or that long. I am here to give you what I give my own family at that table. The truth. The truth. And the Imam is waiting for us. We're not waiting for our Imam. He's waiting for us. If you think, I want my, uh, my young brothers to understand and sisters to understand Qaybat, a quotation. Now imagine right now, I like to ride mountain bikes. So imagine right now, I get all you guys, you know, we're going to go ride mountain bikes. So follow me to the bike trail, okay? Now we're riding, the first car that's parked out front, is that the lead car, or is that just the car that's parked in front? That's just the car parked in front. So to lead, first of all, you have to be in motion. The imam is leading, which means he is in motion. The followers are following, which means they are in motion. motion. Okay. So now we have a convoy. All the cars are following one another. Sort of like you've seen those funeral processions where traffic stops and like coming a hundred cars, you know, going to a funeral for the non-Muslims. Uh, they're followed like that. Now the imam is the lead car. As long as you are focused on him, following him, glued to his taillights, He's doing 65, everyone's doing 65 behind him. He's not going too fast, he's not going too... Slow. Right. So we understand that. Salawat if you're with me this far. <laughs> now what happens now that the cars behind him start texting, disciplining the kids in the back seat, looking at the signs on the highway. What's going to happen between the lead car and the rest of the cars? Bismillah. Uh, like They're going to start... Falling back. And so the distance is going to increase between the followers and the lead leader. Car. Until eventually, what are you not going to see anymore? Gaibat. A quotation. We religiously have been distracted. We religiously have been uh, doing things contrary to Islam, other than Islam, to where religiously we have lost our leader. All we have to do to make his occultation appear sooner is to do what? Get back to the right path, follow it, and slowly but surely we will hasten his what? Invent. Salawat if you understand. Remain silent if you don't, and we'll go through it again. If you understand, salawat. So we're not waiting on our hands sitting like this, waiting for our imam. Our imam is waiting for us to get back to the teachings of Ahlul Bayt so we can hasten his reappearance. This is important. And it's easy. All we have to do is change from this not so beneficial thing that we do and put Islam on it and start practicing the teachings of Ahlul Bayt. Just listen. Imam Ali and Najib Balaga said that the only thing left of Islam is his name. Now listen, our imam is in a quotation. Salawat if this is correct. Imam Ali was alive in Kufa and he said 
that during his time, which was a better state than now, that it's the only thing left of Islam is his name. In fact, he said Islam has been spilled over like a cooking pot with all of his uh, insides spilled out. What about now where we have no imam present? We have no leader present. Is it gotten better or worse? Has it changed for the better or changed for the worse? Worse. Right. So what do we have to do? I want all the, anyone over 40 to just be silent for one time. What do we have to do? What do we have to do to make things better, my young brothers and sisters? Change. One more time. Change. One more time. Change. Change. And stop talking about it. Everybody wants to talk about what needs to be done, but who's going to... Let's do it. We have to. And it's easy. All you have to do, five daily prayers. If you can, as many as you can in the mosque. You, why is it that five daily prayers, when possible, is emphasized? Five daily prayers in congregation establishes unity. There's a difference between being in the same room and being unified. Because when you're unified, you have the same objectives and goals. And a movement and a, the mu'minin and the mu'minat should be on a unified goal, which is the highest levels of Jannat. Or if you want to bring it down, we should be trying to be the best representatives of Ahlul Bayt. How many of our children do we teach them, or how many of our children say, I want to be, the, I want to be like the Salman Farsi of my time. I want to be the Migdad of my time. I want to be the Abu Dhar of my time. If anything we say, I want you to be the best doctor of your time. I want you to be the best lawyer of your time. Think about this. Hopefully I'm not talking over the heads, I'm talking right to the hearts. Imam Sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam said, keep talking because sometimes a word will may have, well, one word can have a miraculous effect. Let me ask you this before I begin to close out. And I'm going to ask the question, and I'm going to ask the question, and if you are one of those, the loudest salawat, as a gift to Imam Askari, alayhi salatu wasalam, do you love Ahlul Bayt? Are you going to sacrifice your lives for Ahl Bayt? If you haven't yesterday, starting tomorrow, are you going to try to do more to please Ahl Bayt? And obviously, to do this, we need to know more about them than just the dates of when they were born and when they died. We have to make this change. We have to make this change. <coughs> Understand this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the dunya to his friends and his enemies. He only gives the akhirah to his friends. And if you have to make a choice between dunya and akhirah, what should you choose? Now let me tell my young brothers and sisters this, because understand this ladies why I particularly emphasize the youth. The youth are like soft clay, and soft clay you can do what with it? Mold it. The elders are like hard baked clay. When you try to mold that, in many cases you'll break it. It can be molded, it can be shaped, but it's a lot more difficult than the youth. And so, the adults, even if you are struggling with your relationship with Ahlul Bayt, do not hinder your kids. Most doctors will say to their sons who are in the same profession, I want you to be a better doctor than me. Most women, for example, if a woman's a nurse and their daughter's a nurse, she'll say, I want you to be a better nurse than me. Apply this philosophy no matter what thing to say, I want you to be a better Muslim than me, my daughter. I want you to be a better follower of Ahlul Bayt than me, my son. In fact, I want you to be so good that maybe you could pray for my shortcomings. This is what it's about. I am one who was on the pit of the brick of hell. Well, I mentioned that in the Quran. And he saved me the first time. Now it's up for me to have his mercy and try to save myself. Same for all of us. There's no compulsion in religion. And the Ahlul they are aware of everything we do. So, what do we do to make a tangible change? First of all, when you go home, inshallah, I'm going to give you sound advice that I give my, my own family. Do Tawbah. And reaffirm your oath to Ahlul Bayt. Allah 
Oscar Bay, maybe I haven't been putting you first, I'm going to change that. Maybe I've only been trying to treat your religion like a buffet, only take bits and pieces. Islam is not a buffet, my dear brothers and sisters. You don't take, when you go to a buffet, what do you do? Let me get the chicken, the this and that, and leave the other. This is not Islam. You have to take it all or leave it. Salawat if you understand. <laughs> the Ahlul Bayt said, Imam Bakr, that came from Imam Bakr, as, among the, as well as the others, but I'm going to quote it from Imam Bakr, alayhi salatu wasalam. He said to his uh, companion Jabir, he said, he mentioned about those who claim to be Shia. And he said in a lengthy hadith, he said, in the midst of, he said, those who fear Allah are our Shia. Those who do not fear Allah are our enemy. Now, what does anybody need to tafsir for that? And he said, Imam Sadiq said when he sent his companions out, that if there are a community of 200,000 Muslims, my Shia should be the most religious of them, the most righteous of them. What we have is that in our day and time, most of us, old or young, only want a passing grade. All I want is a 65 with Ahlul Bayt as opposed to trying to get 100 or better, an extra credit. Now when it comes to school, if your child comes home with a 65, are you pleased or displeased? You can do better than that. Put forth 100% effort. I want the grades to come up the next semester. Salawat if this is true. And you don't apply this philosophy to Islam, the most important aspect of their lives? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings and tawfiq to be on the right path. We ask him for the wisdom to understand his guidance. We ask him to hasten the reappearance of our iman. To make us his helper when he comes. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Inshallah, I have a few minutes. If you want to ask a few questions, maybe two or three from each side concerning tonight's talk. Anything that may be unclear, that you want some clarification or something. We don't want to go outside the scope. There's a lot of questions about change and what needs to be done to make this change. Bismillah. If no one asks questions, that means that everybody understood clearly. Salawat if this is correct. Bismillah. Yeah. I've heard two statements and need some clarification. <clears throat> the one is, when the world gets so bad, the sins get so, 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 so great, that Imam will come to establish justice. And then we also heard statement that uh, the, we have to get more righteous, more in the line of the teachings of Imam, and then the Imam will come. So please clarify. Okay. As far as the oppression, that is throughout the whole world. As far as the getting in the line of Ahl bayt that is the Shia. So as far as getting in tune with Ahl bayt becoming more religious, becoming more pious, we're talking about our house. And that house is followers of Ahl bayt When it comes to talking about the corruption and oppression that is going on, that the Imam is going to have to come, that is concerning the yard, which is everything else. Uh, so we have to, uh, everyone actually should be auditioning for the Imam's army, male or female alike. By in, if you can be righteous amongst corruption, then you're like super Muslim, super Shia. So even though there's going to be oppression and, and corruption all over the land, the Shia are supposed to shine like a shiny new penny. Who's ever seen a brand new penny? How it's bright, like the best looking coin, even though it's the cheapest, right? Yeah. We're supposed to shine just like that, even amongst this oppression and, and uh, all this corruption that's going on. So what if you understand? Oh, Is that clear a little bit, brother? Try to find Bismillah. And, and, and let me add this. There used to be a time where we, you know, we tried to follow the example of Ahl Bayt. Not just as much of what is halal or haram. What has the marja permitted? Or what has he forbidden? What is makru? What is haram? We should be along the lines of when we want to do something, would Ali do that? Would Fatima do, would Fatima do that? Peace be upon both of them. No. Or, no. 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 No.
or if we want to say something or think something, we should be thinking, would Fatima be thinking that? Or will Ali be thinking that? This is what we should be along the lines of, not just trying to get a passing grade of what is halal or haram. We should be beyond, we should be above that to say, we want to do what the Aqbal Bay did. We want to not do what they didn't do. And that is why we have the Aima, and that is why we also have Fatima to Zahra. We also have Bibi Zainab and the rest of the ladies of Aqbal Bay to give us male role models and also female role models. But in many cases, we don't want to follow their role model. But we'll shed the most tears when it comes to their shahadat, but we don't want to do anything like they did. The best honor, the tears that we give for them on certain occasions is the least that we can give. What's the most that we can give? Following them. Our model should be inna salati wa nusuki wa mayahya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. Verily my prayer, my sacrifice, my life and my death are all for Allah. Understand this, and I have to add this because I'm not guaranteed tomorrow. Is it true that to betray a trust is a major sin? Tell me what if this is true. <laughs> so to fulfill a trust means someone gave you something and when the time comes you return it back. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you life. You have to give it back. And how do you give it back? By living the way that he prescribed for you. If you do not live the way he prescribed for you, that he even demonstrated for you, you are betraying your trust. Be mindful, be warned. I was reading in the, about Imam Hassan al-Askari recently, and one of his duas he mentioned about the ulama. And he said uh, concerning them, uh, those who keep things behind their back. What does that mean? I'll give you some examples. This is my job. I want to be, have a return visit, so I'm not going to talk about anything that you need to talk about because I want to make sure you bring me back so I can get a nice hadaya. If I talk about the truth, they may not invite me and that cuts my pockets off. This is not a job for me. This is a burden. You understand? You need the truth. If you go to the doctor, do you want him to tell you the truth or to tell you something that just makes you smile? You're going to die. He's going, oh, you're okay. You're fine. <laughs> Do you want him to tell you what the real deal is or what? It's me for the ladies. Inshallah, two questions from the lady side, and inshallah, we'll uh, wrap up. Inshallah, Allah will bless Well, let me add this for the ladies. It is important that you realize and learn if you don't know who Fatima was. Fatima was such that when a blind man came to visit her, she still put on the veil for a blind man. And Rasulullah said to my daughter, he said, why are you putting on the veil? He's blind. She said, although he can't see me, I can see him. And he said, surely you are from me. Look at her modesty. We have to be mindful that hijab is much more than just the veil on our heads. It is modesty altogether, and it also applies for the men as well. We need to know who Ahlul Bayt were. We need the, there are brothers and sisters here who maybe they didn't go to Qum, but are still quite knowledgeable, still read a lot, have good intellect. Teach these children about Ahlul Bayt, how they lived. Teach them their charity, teach them their piety, teach them their rights so the kids can have a role model. We need to do this. We need to do this. And the ladies, you need to know because it is not hijab where uh, you look at the disbelieving women of our society, Take whatever they have on and put a hijab on top. And this is modesty. Rasulullah said, there will be a time where the women of my ummah will come to me with clothing on, but it will be as if they are unclothed because of the lack of modesty. They think, oh, just put the veil on and it's fine. This is not. And there are many other aspects that we need to mention, but it's up to, the, the, to, to address these issues. The best thing you can give anyone is a good example. And our children, my children, your children, they need to see that Islam is not like a nine to five. Come to the center, clock in, boop, Muslim. They clock out, boop, go back to whatever else. Islam is a way of life. It is a way of life. Do you understand that? It's a way of life. It's a way of life. Bismillah. I'm sorry, Bismillah. Hi, I'm 
first of all, thank you very much for, for reminding us of, of getting back to the origin and uh, teaching of Hanul Bey. And I totally understand that. And that's the very reason that people like me come and, and listen. Um, but I have to add one last, one, one more thing, and that is that just getting back to the origin is not a solution. Like um, Shahid Mutahari, he wrote this book of uh, Islam al Maslahat al Zaman, or, um, uh, or Islam and, uh, and the way to integrate to the needs of the time. So we cannot isolate ourselves, we cannot practice our, our, our beliefs without, without noting or noticing what is going on in the society. I think the challenge is not just getting back to the origin, but to apply our learnings to what is, uh, uh, what, what basically allow, uh, the, the society or what's going on in the society allows us to do. Um, so that is the main challenge for people like me who are, are, are basically uh, immigrant to this country. Uh, and I, I'm not sure if, um, basically, I'm not sure if we have, if, if the member can be a place to, to mention those things and, 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 and provide some uh, teaching on those uh, 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 and, and I can learn from those. Um, that's the only thing that I want to mention, that uh, people like myself, we can uh, learn more uh, if, if, those, if that kind of applied thought is, is in the translation. Thank you. Yeah, uh, alhamdulillah, absolutely correct. Uh, it's not just turning back to Abu Dhabi, it's applying their teachings. You know, because every situation you can get into, the Ayama have been in that situation to the highest degree. And obviously, like you mentioned, you can't turn a blind eye to society. But you have to realize that Islam, you know, was perfected at Gadir Khum. Allah perfected it. He perfected it for all time. So the Quran does work, provided we provide it. The example of the Bayt, provided we provide it. Don't you think? The Imams have lived with oppressive rulers. The Imams have lived during the times of mass corruption. And they gave us an example. But we have to apply these things. And obviously, uh, there's no miraculous hour speech. It takes hard work. For example, there was a time where after every prayer, there was a short 15-minute speech about a topic, which gave people a learning not just once a week, but more on a regular basis concerning tangibles. Obviously, also, there are certain maligners, I don't want to name them, who like to spend time with the children so they can see how to be Muslim. You understand what I'm saying? They can see how you deal in a non-Muslim society. For example, the story of Prophet Yusuf. The story of Nabi Yusuf salam, is a good example from Quran how you live in an un-Islamic time. Did he not live a believer in a society that was completely pagan? And what he did was he did not sacrifice his religion. He stood firm and his religion spread to others. So the Quran is the solution provided, like the brother said, we act upon it. Not just go and read it, like, okay, I'm doing <laughs> You take something, apply it in your daily life. This is what I mean by the Quran is the book, Akhul Bayt demonstrate how to do it. And you are absolutely correct, brother. And um, the key is that, like you mentioned, which is important, this is the thing about, I mentioned about religion and religious attainment. What is better, going to a clinic where you're a number or having your own private doctor? What? You go to your private doctor with a stomach ache, he's going to say, he's going to check you, he's going to say, how's everything with the family? Because there could be some family issues that are causing some physical thing. He's going to be more intimate with you. You're going to be able to open up and talk. You trust him. You can talk about many different things. If you go to the clinic, do you do that? No. This is the difference between having, uh, obviously it depends on who it is, having a scholar and having scholars just come and visit. For example, uh, me coming here, all I can do is talk for a few minutes. We're not talking intimate, we're not discussing problems, you're not coming to my house, I'm not coming to your house, we're not diagnosing things, we're not working for the solution, I just come give a speech and go home. This is not working. It takes more than that. What it takes, my brother, in addition to what you said, is that they come off the mimbar and say, I told you what to do, or explain to you via Aqul Bay and Quran, now I'm going to show you. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to show you. And that's what needs to be done because anybody who thinks that you cannot practice religion at a high level in America, you're a liar. Because I know people who are practicing this doctrine of Ahl al-Bayt at a high level in this country. And what it is is that the kids need to see this. Male and female alike. You understand? They need to see it. What speaks louder? Actions or words? We talk a good talk. 
We have to roll up the sleeves, start saving our children, saving our families, saving ourselves. Assalamu alaikum.